Hi everyone. Are you ready for story time with Louie and Sophie? We're going to read our next chapter of Charlotte's Web. This is chapter five and it's called Charlotte. Now, if you remember, it was a while ago, we left off with Wilbur hearing saying, I can't see you and who are you? And the voice said, I'm right up here. Go to sleep, you'll see me in the morning. The night seemed long. Wilbur's stomach was empty and his mind was full. And when your stomach is empty and your mind is full, it's always hard to sleep. A dozen times during the night, Wilbur woke and stared into the blackness, listening to the sounds and trying to figure out what time it was. A barn is never perfectly quiet. Even at midnight, there's usually something stirring. The first time he woke, he heard Templeton gnawing a hole in the grain bin. Templeton's teeth scraped loudly against the wood and made quite a racket. That crazy rat, thought Wilbur, why does he have to stay up all night grinding his clashers and destroying people's property? Why can't he go to sleep like any decent animal? The second time Wilbur woke, he heard the goose turning on her nest and chuckling to herself. What time is it? whispered Wilbur to the goose. Probably, obbly, obbly, about half past 11, said the goose. Why aren't you asleep, Wilbur? Too many things on my mind, said Wilbur. Well, said the goose, that's not my trouble. I have nothing at all on my mind, but I've too many things under my behind. Have you ever tried to sleep while sitting on eight eggs? No, replied Wilbur. I suppose it is uncomfortable. How long does it take for a goose egg to hatch? Approximately, approximately 30 days, all told, answered the goose. Do we know what approximately means? Approximately means maybe give or take a little, it might happen then. So if it's approximately 30 days, it's maybe 29, 28, or 31, or 32, maybe not exactly 30. The goose says, but I cheat a little. On warm afternoons, I just pull a little straw over the eggs and go out for a walk. Wilbur yawned and went back to sleep. In his dreams, he heard again the voice saying, I'll be a friend to you. Go to sleep. You'll see me in the morning. About half an hour before dawn, Wilbur woke and listened. Even the goose was quiet. Overhead on the main floor, nothing stirred, meaning nothing moved. The cows were resting, the horses dozed. Templeton had quit work and gone off somewhere on an errand. The only sound was a slight scraping noise from the rooftop where the weather vane the weather vane swung back and forth. Have you ever seen a weather vane? They're those metal things on the top of roofs sometimes where it spins around to tell what direction the wind is coming. That's a weather vane. Wilbur loved the barn when it was like this, calm and quiet, waiting for light. Day is almost here, he thought. Through a small window, a faint gleam appeared. One by one, the stars went out. Wilbur could see the goose a few feet away. She sat with head tucked under her wing, like that. He could see the sheep and the lambs. The sky lightened. Oh, beautiful day, here it is at last. Today I shall find my friend. Wilbur looked everywhere. He searched his pen thoroughly. He examined the window ledge, stared up at the ceiling, but he saw nothing new. Finally, he decided he would have to speak up. He hated to break the lovely stillness of dawn by using his voice, but he couldn't think of any other way to locate the mysterious new friend who was nowhere to be seen. So Wilbur cleared his throat. <clears throat> Attention, please, he said in a loud, firm voice. Will the party who addressed me at bedtime last night kindly make himself or herself known by giving an appropriate sign or signal. Wilbur paused and listened. All the other animals lifted their heads and stared at him. Wilbur blushed, but he was determined to get in touch with his unknown friend. Attention, please, he said. I will repeat the message. Will the party who addressed me at bedtime last night kindly speak up? Please tell me where you are, if you are my friend. So the party is the person or the animal 
and addressed me means spoke to me. The sheep looked at each other in disgust. Stop your nonsense, Wilbur, said the oldest sheep. If you have a new friend here, you are probably disturbing his rest. And the quickest way to spoil a friendship is to wake somebody up in the morning before he is ready. How can you be sure your friend is an early riser? I beg everyone's pardon, said Wilbur. I didn't mean to be objectionable. There's another word we might not know. Objectionable means disagreeable or um, or against the way people want you to be. He lay down meekly in the manure. Meekly means he wasn't very strong now. He's a little weak. Facing the door, he did not know it, but his friend was very near. And the old sheep was right. The friend was still asleep. We're going to end there and finish chapter five tomorrow. Have a great morning.